Hey everyone, it's Benicia, your community outreach specialist, and today I am with Corporal Alan Wilkin, who you guys have seen before from the Trilby Initiative, but today we are bringing you a very special video. It's going to be a behind the scenes of a stand-up, not a comedy, but a stand-up interview that he does with one of our local news stations to talk about the fact that January is Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Yep, National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, mm -hmm. bringing awareness to this dark crime, mm -hmm. put some light on it, make a difference. Exactly, so stay tuned until after the intro. So let me start with just getting your name and the correct spelling and everything. Yeah, Alan Wilkett, mm -hmm. A-L-A-N-W-I-L-K-E-T-T, -T, Corporal Pasco Sheriff's Office. Okay, and are you in any kind of special, like human trafficking? Is there like a, uh, like unit, a or? unit or yeah. force or is there your part well, of I head up our, our human trafficking okay. uh, task force, so, so the county task force. Okay, and this is Human Trafficking Awareness Month, is that is the right way to say it? Yeah. Okay. And so I guess talk about a little bit of what uh, you guys are doing to kind of raise awareness in, in Pasco County for, for, um, for, the, for, the, for the Awareness Month. Okay. So January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And when we understand the concept of human trafficking, it's forced labor, sex trafficking, involuntary servitude, and up to 20 different forms of human trafficking. It's the second largest criminal enterprise in the world right behind the drug trade generates $150 billion a year, and the International Labor Organization has it at 40.3 million victims globally. So because of this second largest criminal enterprise, and that the United States is recognized as one of the largest consumers of human trafficking, it becomes important for education and awareness to be brought into our community. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're doing is we're doing a lot of community awareness events throughout the month of January, as well as throughout the year, but January focusing on human trafficking awareness and education, such as teaching at CSU academies, uh, doing a lot of community events. But one of our large events that we're doing <clears throat> is called Light Up the Night. Light Up the Night 2019 is an awareness event for human trafficking, and it comes in two different parts. We have a 5K that is going to be run out of Pasco Hernando State College in uh, Wesley Chapel, and that's on January the 19th at 8 o'clock. But the big concert event is February the 2nd at Trinity College. We've got Johnny Diaz going to be there as a, as a singer, as well as some local, local talent, a candlelight vigil. And the whole idea is to raise awareness because the truth of this is this is one of the darkest crimes known to mankind. And the only way to combat darkness is to shed light on it. And that's what awareness does is brings light to darkness. And we must do that. We must do it now. So once, so once you do start that and you get awareness and people around the community know about it, like what is the next kind of uh, result you're hoping to get? You know, you raise awareness, but then how does that, uh, in what ways kind of does it lead to either uh, enforcement or you know, arrests or, sure. or, or getting people out of human trafficking? So step number one, raise awareness. Step number two, get educated. But then three, what action steps can we take? And so the action steps become critical because to know something and not do something about it is as bad as not knowing at all. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that people are taking the appropriate steps. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of different things. They can call our crime tips number on a local level. If it's a crime in progress, it's obviously 911. But one of the things that we encourage is if you see signs and behaviors after being educated, then you've got to call the National Human Trafficking Hotline. The National Human Trafficking Hotline is 888 Three seven three seven eight eight eight. That number activates the task force to begin the investigative process. So obviously once we do the investigation and we get the criminal complaint and begin to get the elements of the crime, then the arrest and prosecution will take place. But we really need A, education, awareness, and then we need somebody to take a step and make a difference in somebody's life. What are some of the things that somebody, you know, if you've if you're out and about, what, what are some of the things that you would see that might trigger you to try and um, call the number or call you guys? You know, what, yeah. what, what should people look for? You know, just, I know part of, part of your events are teaching that, um, but, you know, for us, kind of briefly, what, 
are some of the things to look out for? Well, very quickly, some of the common indicators. So some of the common indicators that we're looking for all revolve around control. Mm -hmm. So the trafficker is seeking to control the victim. So control becomes the nucleus of any activity that we're looking for. So what does some of that control look like? It's going to be the controlling of documents, controlling somebody from being able to speak on their own, answering questions for someone, having their documentation and keeping it in a, a place that's not attainable for the victim themselves, mm -hmm. having unexplained injuries, uh, trips to the emergency room that cannot be explained. Uh, bruising that's not easily explained. Any of those kind of things that, that raise that red flag, but we really look for that to be around that control mechanism. Okay, and so talk a little bit about how big of a problem this is in, in PASCO specifically. Okay, so, so we talked about globally 40.3 mm -hmm. million. The United States being recognized as one of the largest consumers, mm -hmm. and Florida reports at the third highest rate wow. to the National Human Trafficking Hotline following California and Texas. So Florida reporting at number three, and the Tampa Bay area is number three within the state for reporting human trafficking. We have a huge problem in the Tampa Bay area. We have tourism, great weather, major league sporting events. We have uh, uh, beachfront properties and high-end hotels. All of these attractive climates that a trafficker would bring victim here and exploit them out on the streets or in brothels or online. And so we have a big problem in the Tampa Bay area, and Pasco specifically experiences all of the same elements that the Tampa Bay area does as well. We have the forced labor, we have the commercial sex trade, and we have all of these forms happening right in our own backyards. Okay. Um, is there anything else that I'm not asking about that you guys would want to get out? Do you have any resources you want to talk about that we have here in Pasco? Okay, so let's talk about resources for just a moment. One of the resources I would direct people to is the Pasco Sheriff's Office website. On the Pasco Sheriff's website, we have a page that's dedicated to human trafficking, indicators, resources, enhanced resources that will lead you to other places as well to learn more about this, including Polaris Project and the Blue Campaign for the Department of Homeland Security. These resources become critical in being able to have a further understanding of not just what is human trafficking, but what do we do about it. Okay. Cool. I think I'm good. I'm good. Cool. Cool. Take one, take all. That's it. That's take it. One, that's We're it. good. Drop it's the mic. <laughs> it's already on the floor. It's already on the floor. Immediately. <laughs> it's been dropped already. <laughs> the mic's been good. That's pretty much my number one.